What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a real special guest in the building. Listen, this man here, he's won Grammy three times. He's part of Reggae's Royal Family. We're talking about Morgan Heritage. You know we have in the building today? We have, we have the one and only Gramps Morgan in the building today. What's going on, Big Boss? Much love and respect, man, from the world of Jamaica to the entire world. Yes, Rasta. <laughs> <laughs> the man with the golden voice. So how are you doing there right now? Oh, man, just trying to stay safe and, and stay wise and just stay out the way, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what is to happen is going to happen, but, you know, the world has gone through these crises before, even in the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, even in the time of Egypt, when blood had to be spread on the, the front door of, of families to protect themselves from yeah. the, the spirit of death, you know? Mm -hmm. You understand. So, this is something similar, I guess, you know, except in modern times, you just got to stay out the way, stay safe, and, uh, you know, no one is, is, is uh, safe from it, you know? Yeah. We, yeah. I just had to attend my, my uncle's funeral yesterday who passed away from the virus, from COVID-19, and that was via streaming the same way me and you are talking now. So, you know, I'm just happy that, you know, he, he's not suffering anymore. And to all of the families out there, condolences, man. Mm -hmm. Well, I know because it's crazy because we even attended a few um, online funerals and I never in my entire life thought yeah. that I would even, I've never heard of that much less attending something like that yeah just unreal man yeah i mean and what what kind of stuff are you actually doing right now in the quarantine since you have time down what kind of stuff have you been able to accomplish well one of the the, the, the greatest things for me is spending time with my family you know hmm. and i i got remember my father i have 30 children in us but <laughs> i have 29 siblings so you know since when don't have trade exploded on the scene you know we hmm. haven't really gotten any sleep yeah and I mean, since that day, I remember in 2005, we toured for 18 months, 18 months straight with 11 days off. So it, it hasn't been easy. So we really been getting time to really spend with the family, them and, and our our children. It's been something special. We formed a WhatsApp group and we're talking to all, there's about 25 of us in there. So really? it's amazing to us that we can have that quick access to one and to kind of just catch up on life and, you know, see pictures of my, my my nieces and nephews and they my other brothers and sisters are seeing nieces and nephews they didn't know they had yeah. didn't know that was born or they heard of them i never get that chance so it's really the the, the internet i don't know what we would do without it right now we probably it would it would be a different time because Trust at me. least now we are entertained and we can yeah. entertain each other you understand that wow all right so i want to get a little bit back into your background and then we're going to forward into again to jamaica near where we are right now okay Yes. I know, growing up in your house right now, how many brothers and sisters do you actually grow up with in the house? Well, at the time, there's always somebody going to university. So when we, the amount of brothers and sisters we grew up with in the house, it's, it's, it's just different, you know? Got you. It's like at one point, it was like 14. At the time, there was 16. And then one went to college. And then, and then another went to college. So it was always one elevated and going up, you know, to university. Yeah. Boston College, most of my, my sisters went to in Massachusetts. And uh, it, I want to tell you, at one time, it was, I think the most I've ever been as I was around 18. In the house at one time. One wow. time. One <laughs> yeah. time. That's a lot. That's bunk a lot of people. like crazy. You can imagine them on the bunk beds. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's where I wanted to know. So then now with so many of you guys in the house, and I guess all you guys, because they say seven brothers, seven different minds. All of you guys in the house now doing all this, when did you guys decide that you guys were getting into music? Was it something you guys were put into because of your father, something you guys decided, or was a combination of both? I would say a combination of both, but really we were around it, you know, watching my father and his band, the Black Eagles. And, you know, I remember the first time I heard my father's song on local radio station in yeah. Springfield, Massachusetts. Yeah. And he didn't realize, you know, daddy's on the radio, you know? <laughs> he realized that the song, I'll do anything for you. You know, as a as a Jamaican, you know, exploding on the, the disco charts and the R and B charts in the United States, that's a major deal. Yeah. You know, to follow that was now that we found love, what are we gonna do? Third world. So my yeah. father was one of those artists that set the pace, even though he was a reggae artist, 
-hmm. but you know when he started that did that song with Burt Reed rest in peace the song kind of took him to a whole other a monster that he was torn with people like Frankie Beverly and Mears and you know mm -hmm. so it wasn't really I think you, we grew up around it, you know mm -hmm. and then eventually your father and your mother are your are your idols right those who, mm -hmm. who you want to be like as my father was a gunman then probably would I want to be a gunman <laughs> right and if he yeah. was a lawyer I would probably want to be a lawyer a doctor yeah. we children learn what they live that what surrounds them 100%. so that's why as parents you know we really have to to, to set good example so it was that was the biggest influence we wanted to do what daddy was doing yeah. you know the way he would, he would sit on the couch and smoke his spliff and have his notepad and playing his cassette and right into the to the truck and you know and i live to see we come end up doing the same thing crazy that is crazy right there so then 18 you guys so then when did did the whole family move from where did you guys move from the states to Jamaica? What part of the states were you in, and then you moved to Jamaica? We were in Springfield, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. I went from kid kindergarten to high school, mm -hmm. and when it was a little bit of conflict at that time as a man, because I was a hell of a football player. I played American mm -hmm. football, mm -hmm. and it was I had to decide whether I wanted to take these football scholarships and entertain that, or take my true God-given gift which was music, you know, okay. which I was still on the path of growing with that. It wasn't like I was in high school and had major success. It was just yeah. all still a dream. Mm -hmm. So I had to make a decision as a man. And my dad really helped me and said, you, you know, your gift is music, son. Mm -hmm. And then my football coach told me, say, yo, you can sing till you're 100. I'm going to say, you know what? Thank you for telling me the truth. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and yeah, I kind of yeah. just, I kind of just took it from there and just say, you know, let me stick with this music thing. Mm -hmm. But that, it's it's between Springfield, Massachusetts, where we got our education. Mm -hmm. And then you moved to Jamaica, and I think the move was in 1995. 1995, but we had moved to New York as soon as I graduated high school. Mm -hmm. um, I left the graduation where I sang. Me and Peter sang. It's so hard mm -hmm. to say goodbye by Boys to Men at our graduation. Yeah. And then went straight to New York. I mean, literally. There no party, no friends, yeah. no hangout, no ice cream. God. We came home, we eat dinner. Mm -hmm. Made a squeeze in a one kiss from our girls. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then, and then we went to New York City. And I stayed mm -hmm. there for, uh, what, it was uh, three years? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, three years. Okay. In 1992, we went up the same year. We went to Reggae Sunsplash, performed on Reggae Sunsplash, got okay. signed to MCA Records, which is now Universal. Yeah. So it was a beautiful thing that the same. I graduated in June, and then by September, I was signed to MCA Records. Crazy. So God is good. And then from then, brother, it was like um, we started making music, stayed with MCA for two. It was a busy two years. Okay. And then we went to Africa in '94. And then my dad was just like, you know, we went to when we went to Ivory Coast, it was just something culturally that hit us that was just like, this feels like home. And the closest yeah. thing to that that we have connection to in the Western Hemisphere is Jamaica. Yeah. And then in 1995, my father fainted in the bathroom, I'll never forget, in Brooklyn. And he was like, yo, Moan, go home. I want to go home. Translation for everyone that's listening <laughs> worldwide. Yeah. Uh, but in Jamaica, I would say, Moan, go home. <laughs> And he was like, um, Moanga, Jamaica. And he went to a place named Bart Fountain in St. Thomas. And he said, children, I found a place. Yeah. I'm moving back to Jamaica. And I come in and those older ones said, okay, we'll come. And the middle-aged ones said, well, okay. And yeah. are, we move are we leaving America? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, and was this the first time actually, had you been to Jamaica before this? Or yeah, man, as a child. And okay. as a child, I went when I was like uh, like three years old. I didn't. I don't remember nothing, of mm -hmm. course. <laughs> but everyone remembers me as a child there. And then in 1988, I remember going there for the 12 Tribe of Israel function. They had a thing called the leather dance. Yeah, everybody, imagine you, a leather dance that you would wear all leather in Jamaica. Just imagine. <laughs> I don't know who, who, who thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> Who thought about yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, well, it was a Rastafarian wow. organization where they said, we're going to have the letter dance. <laughs> and that was in 88. And then um, my mother passed away that year. Rest in peace to Pearl okay. Foster, you know? Mm -hmm. And then um, after that, um, we came. So between 9 to 5 mm -hmm. and 9 to 4 was 
that transition culturally where we just wanted to re re-examine our lives mm -hmm. from father to children to and then we just my father said i'm moving i'm moving yeah. who want to come? come come but if not big woman and have man and woman you know let me translate that for the for the americans and the canadians <laughs> if you're a man or a woman and you have your 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 spouses or your boyfriend and girlfriend or your significant other you can um basically stay and we all decided to go shortly mm -hmm. after we started to build our homes um two homes and in, in in um in in jamaica in st thomas jamaica yeah. and then after that it was just like every some people said you know i want to go back this is not for me because my father i don't know what got into him but he chose the yeah. slowest parish in jamaica yeah. the most <laughs> undeveloped parish yeah so we didn't go to kingston we didn't go to montego bay and ochi and the grill and you know no, he went to St. Thomas, so, you know. Okay, let me give you a Because he wanted us to learn it from the root. Because that Jamaica, is. when a city is developing and you want to experience it culturally, you have to go to the, 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 the meat of things. Yeah, you're right. And he took us to St. Thomas where we learned how to wash our clothes in our river to see little children walking mm -hmm. barefoot so we can have the value mm -hmm. of taking care of our shoes. Because yeah. in America, when you're done with our shoes and you just throw it away and go to the store and buy another one. Yeah, you know that's the thing. We don't take care of our things. That's not the mentality that's breathed in in Northern America to children. It's like when it's over, I was we, we walked on the back of the heels. You know those things. I learned from Jamaica yeah. and became a different man when I saw what people survive with nothing. The 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 the, the point of seeing somebody have to survive without hot water to take a hot warm hot shower. Yeah, you know, and those things changed me as a man. So. Mm -hmm. When we moved to Jamaica, it was just like, wow, this changed our life. And then it was for life purpose. It wasn't for music. Eventually, we okay. a call was made with um, Dennis Howard, and we were introduced to Bobby Digital and King Jammies, and then our life changed. Okay. Before, because that part of the story is extremely important, but what I told you before I even, what I told you on DM, this is the story I have for you, okay? I yeah. was in Jamaica in 1995, going into yep. 1996, New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. Where we were, New Year's Eve, was your house in St. Thomas, okay? Do you wow. remember New Year's Eve, you guys had a you guys had a party, but you guys were the band for New Year's Eve at the house. 1995 going into 96. And at that time there, I would swear there was more members in the group, and I don't think nobody had really luck yet those times there. Right, no, I didn't, I didn't put on my... Locks until nine, 97. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then spiritually, just it was an awakening, you know, where we just was around some serious bingy and bongo kasha, rest in peace, you know, um, yeah. bongo niente, you know, bongo puta. Yeah. Those are Rasta <laughs> elder people that really showed us the foundation of life and to value the birds, the trees, nature, mm -hmm. the sun, the earth, the moon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it changes you as a man. Yeah. Yeah, no, I remember. And was there actually more members in the group at that time there also, or it was always the same? I think it started out with five or six of you guys. Yeah, man, it was five. It was five, and now currently it's still five, but three mm -hmm. currently, which is me, Peter, and Mojo, that mm -hmm. currently do the touring. But mm -hmm. Mojo and Luke's, I mean, I mean Luke's and, and Yuna, you know, Yuna got sick and had a heart attack. A while back and it's recovered amazing and we, we can't wait to get back on stage as all five of us so there's just yeah. something special of when course. we're taking the three vocals with you and then Luke's is over there on the guitar checking our ear crazy all right yeah. so then now want to get into your bobby digital story because we know bobby digital just passed i want one of your best memory from bobby digital and then we'll speed it up a bit because i know time is limited right here but i definitely want a bobby digital story from you uh, the most significant one, I would say, I'll give you two, was when he made us, the first day we came there, and he said, all right, come in. Yeah. You know, and he made us go to the shop, the store in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and buy five pounds of flour and <laughs> I think four pounds of salt fish. Yeah. And he made us climb the tree, a hockey tree, yeah. next to the studio, and climb the roof and pick down some hockey. Mm -hmm. To understand that this music is not about hype, it's not about great vocals and great music, it's about a vibration. Yeah. Is it, a, it is a spiritual experience that is going to uplift you. 
and that's what reggae is that's what reggae is supposed to be if it's not that whether it stems off of reggae or reggae dance or our love as rock it's supposed to make you feel good that's what it's supposed to do and of course ones and ones express themselves differently but that was the greatest lesson and when we eat that akian sawfish because we were so eager to work you know it's from america it was like come on dude let's go let's, let's go. get in the studio man let's go what are you doing let's yeah. go bobby and he was like easy man <laughs> and he was like this guy is like come on and it just shows that's the vibe of jamaica soon come no problem everything irie yeah. and that's jamaica mm -hmm. you know and, and a, a lot of people need that and there's a time when you need to fast forward you mean like get the stuff done mm -hmm. and i think jamaica is, has a lot to do um so much with even pop culture today when you talk about people like drake the influence of reggae people like swiss beats the influence of reggae dj khaled yeah. uh no doubt um sting reggae is i mean we set the trend in a lot of ways and For jamaica sure. a lot to be proud of you know and mm -hmm. caribbean people overall mm -hmm. you know so that bobby digital story is close to me because it showed yeah. me a lot about humbling yourself and let stay out of the way of progress right yeah. even of your own self sometimes a lot of us we stand in the way of our own progress sometimes we need to get out of the way of our progress 100%. You know? the other one is when he discovered my voice on a song i was singing called um let's make up with okay. my sister Yuna, because peter is the lead singer of morgan heritage and forever will be and mm -hmm. that's the morgan heritage business model and it was it was so wonderful to watch his eyes pluck out when he heard me sing solo on that song, on the Morgan Heritage album. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Brett, you just sound like, like, well, he said, uh, he said, Mikey Spice and yeah, okay. Frankie the Paul. Big, and, and, and heavy and voice. Guitars. Yeah. So it was just that baritone, you know, Luciana has the same thing. Bushman has that same kind of voice. And mm -hmm. it's not a lot of us in Jamaica. Um, lead singer of Third World, um, Bunny Rugs. I mean, it was not a lot of those voices and the Barry Simons, and he was just shocked that I was quiet the whole time and then say, "Yo, give me out, give me a tune more and sing a tune by myself." It wasn't yeah. that thing. That's not the model, the business model of Morgan Heritage. Peter mm -hmm. is the lead singer, mm -hmm. and it was amazing that we started to balance. And then over the years, you find that I sing one and two song like "I'm Coming Home" and everything with me, and then you know, the sound was born. Yeah. Yeah. Just like that. No, it's because you your sound as a group and as individuals is just amazing because when you hear everybody individually, everybody's distinctive. But when yeah. it comes together as a group, nobody's distinctive. It's just one big harmony. Yeah, man. It, it's something special. Somebody once asked us, does our harmonies blend together like that because we are blood? I, I probably think it has something to do with it. Yeah. And as, also a lot of practice, you know. There was times recording, I would make my sister Yuna cry in the booth because mm -hmm. I'm like, the, the, I'm the one that cracks the whip when it comes yeah. to <laughs> the music. <laughs> and, you know, I'm the musical director in the band. Yeah. So it has to be right. We, mm -hmm. we, it, it's like a, um, it's very militant. We take music very serious, you know. If you're going to come in the Bible, it says, come before the Lord skillfully mm -hmm. if you're going to sing. Mm -hmm. So don't come with your music and, and take it for a joke or you're a fisherman for 25, 30 years and all of a sudden you never had the skill to sing. And then you say, boy, I'm a tune. I can't say Spraga Benz, I sing a tune. You know, it can't be that thing. It, 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 yeah. Let it be a gift. If it's mm -hmm. not your gift, I'm going to be, if it wasn't singing, I'd probably be playing um, football. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or I probably got it organized in the streets and yeah. got an organized crime because, you know, those things is what, plagues a young black man you yeah. know trying to escape from the hood so a lot of times young black men escape through education um through sports and, and a, most of it is through sports he turned a basketball player a football player a boxer look at mike tyson you know look at you, you know you can i mean you name it look at lebron james if it wasn't for his mother being a single strong mother to pull him through that he would have got tied up and they would have been just another great black man gone to the waist yeah. Because you know the streets are unrelenting. It doesn't respect anybody. It oh, just eats no. up everybody in its Tell me about it. You understand? Two questions before I get you out of here. I want to talk to you about your Grammy wins. And then I want to talk to you about your new release that's actually coming out June 5th. All yes. right? Yes. Your first Grammy win. What was that feeling like? And what was the which album actually won the first Grammy? 
I will, well, I won a Grammy with a Buja Bantan um, album before yes. the dawn. Yes. You know, I was the organizer behind that while he was in prison, as well as Tracy McGregor, which is his, was his manager at the time. Okay. And helped really, I sang a song with him and, and helped to organize some of the tracks. And, you know, I was part of that album. Me and him sing a song called Try Life on it, where a lot of people don't even know about. Yeah. Uh, and then I won with Morgan Heritage with um, Strictly Roots. Um, mm -hmm. That was, you know, as an artist, but I was just... It was like a, a breath of fresh air. Like, you just, oh, yeah. we did it, you know? And it yeah. was, you know, there's no other, you, you can win. There's a lot of Irama awards, of course. You know, I'm big up to Ephraim Martin. And then you, you know, which we call our Grammys. And then mm -hmm. you have the, 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 the BET awards and the billboards. But the Grammys is that standard of music where um, the re they call themselves the Recording Academy, where mm -hmm. the highest, level you can reach in music that accolade is the grammys and then when you talk about movies it's an oscar yeah. so it's that <laughs> thing for music so yeah. when that happened you know we always dreamed of that to say one day i want to be on the grammys when you saw <laughs> michael yeah. jackson performing on the grammys and all these artists whitney houston and winning and quincy jones would have a handful of grammys you know the walk with them and it, it was something special when we won on in 2016 and uh, for me, Peter, and Luke's to be there. Mojo wasn't there at the time. He okay. had made a commitment to, to Africa mm -hmm. and was, you know, just setting our future for Africa over there at the time in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. And as well as um, Yuna was, was sick. You know, she had a heart attack. So we just said, we got this. Just And then we red car and when while we was on the red carpet we was stream videotape video yes. video her at the same mm -hmm. time we bumped up into diplo oh well, mm -hmm. that was on from major laser, major laser. It was like and then we bumped up into dj khaled and it was just like a huge celebration like living in the moment enjoying it and yuna was on the on the phone call and she was just like oh my god screaming <laughs> and then we bumped up into this guy from when me and um Ryan Seacrest was on there and okay. Ryan Seacrest said hello to her on the on the on the on the on my phone. Yeah. So it, it, it was something special. And then the, the the recent most the third one was with um Shaggy. Mm -hmm. After we it, it was in New York and we lost the Grammy mm -hmm. um on our second nomination as Morgan Heritage on the album Avracadabra. Mm -hmm. Um he said, just come over to the studio, I mean, will vibe, you know, yeah. translation. He said, Come over to the studio. I'm here in the studio. <laughs> with sting yeah and i was okay. like all right and i was like oh, man i don't care because I, I i was i was a little sad you know that we lost i think it was a great album um yeah. that a lot of people didn't get to listen to but that's music you know you got to keep going right mm -hmm. and i want to tell you that sometimes you don't even win a grammy for your best album most of the time it's sometimes politically who gets a chance to listen to it who's aligned how you run a campaign it's very political mm -hmm. and it came to a point where Shaggy just said, come to the studio. And I said, Peter, let's go to the studio, man. Let, let, let's, let's, it's back to the drawing board. And I walked in the studio, there was Sting. And I'm like, whoa. Okay. You're really in the studio with Sting. Yeah. <laughs> and Shaggy said, yeah, I'm working on an album. Yeah. And I was like, okay. Yeah. All right. And Sting goes, hi, mate. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Hey, why don't you throw your voice on this one? I'm yeah. like, me? Peter said, what? Mojo standing there like, Sting just asked us to get on a track. Crazy. Brother, we went and sang. Mm -hmm. Idonia had his voice on a track, a song called 44876, mm -hmm. which represents the two area codes of Jamaica and the UK. And it was just a, a, a coming together of two cultures okay. which love each other. We mm -hmm. love Guy England, so we got our work. Mm -hmm. And British people love come and Jamaica for this one and jerk chicken and red stripe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a great exchange musically. And it it was just amazing to, to just be a part of that historical album, which is a brilliant album. And it, it ended up being the title track of the album. Okay. Just like that. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> As you said, it's energy, vibrations and stuff. So it all makes sense. Everything aligned and that's how it everything connected. Yes, man. You understand. All right. Let's talk about this big song that's being released June 5th on all streaming platforms right across the board. Right now, you can pre-release it right now. You could pre-order it right now. The song is called People Like You. Let's talk about that song a bit. 
people like you just was something it was a prayer you know mm -hmm. it, it was a song that was recorded by a canadian a guy named johnny reed mm -hmm. and when the song was recorded me and him end up meeting at a hockey game here in nashville okay weird weird is <laughs> i know i know i know i know yeah. people. a hockey game in nashville, nashville. Tennessee. and he okay. he just opened a studio um and wanted me to just come and be a part of the movement and just enjoy it. I mean, he had a, a microphone where Johnny Cash had recorded on this song, on okay. this microphone that he wanted me to see. And that's legendary. I'm like, you're not going to get a chance to hold a microphone that no. Johnny Cash sang into. No. And I said, even if, I, if it's some jingles, I would love to come and sing on this mic. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And he uh, just me and him over the past year have become very close. Okay. And it, it, there was a shooting in Halifax that took place in Nova Scotia. And he sang the song and he looked at me last week mm -hmm. and said, man, you got to sing this song. I just think that with your tone and your voice, which me and him is like my musical brother, yeah. like the music that we do together is just, you know, we just started saying, let's write some songs together. That's it. Yeah. And then that song was already out there for the people of Nova Scotia. Rest in peace to all those families in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it just became something like this. We just shipped it out like three days ago. Crazy. And it's just moving. And Johnny had a, a vision of just my voice being on the record that it would bring something different because he said there's something in my voice, which I don't know what it is till this day, yeah. that resonates with people. And he mm -hmm. calls me, he calls me the, 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 the um, the priest. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, I could understand why he would say that. Yeah, and then the engineers that at the studio they would call me Mafasta, you know, which was from the Lion King, and I'm mm -hmm. and I'm like, I don't know why you guys saying that. You know, <laughs> advice. He sounds more like Mufasa, <laughs> yeah. you know. Crazy. And um, I sang the song, and we send it out, and we say, okay, let 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 this song heal people because it's a song of comfort. Yes. That people are going through. A lot of Caribbean people not a, got, never got a chance to hear the song. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the United States never got a chance to hear the song. A lot of people in Europe, Africa, never got a chance to hear the song. Mm -hmm. So he said, you sing this song. And I sang it, and it just came out. I thought it, we, we both thought it was a good song, but not the way people... I mean, I've never had a record do this before. It's okay. just... We, we have to be chasing the record, catching up, because... <laughs> We just sent to a couple of people and it just, and we just wanted to show appreciation to a lot of the Caribbean people, a lot of Africans, and especially the people in the United States that are working in the care worker system, the nurses, the doctors, and are not every day saying, keep pushing for us. Thank you. Even though some have passed away, thank you for, for what you do. So there's a place up there for people like you. Mm -hmm. I heard up there the streets are made of gold and, you know, just to let them know that we the one, ones that they have lost mm -hmm. in doing their best, God, them can't save everybody because this virus is serious, brother. And it's just a song to make them feel appreciated and just to say thank you. Mm -hmm. And Halo Music and, and me and uh, Dada Sun Entertainment has joined forces mm -hmm. to just bring this song to the world. You know, thank you to Johnny Reed for, for seeing the vision and allowing me to be me because I'm not gonna sing a lot of songs about smack it up and flip it up. I may sing a one or two songs about yeah. of a drink a rum and let's have some fun and yeah. put on some jerk chicken and two roast fish. I may sing a song about that, about mm -hmm. let us all having a good time and drink responsibly, drink responsibly, but no songs of violence and harm. I just want everybody to smile. I just want to be that guy to make everybody feel comforted. And I think uh, people like you is gonna do that and let people have a sense of appreciation. Of course, it came off of me and him seeing me um, experience the death of Bobby Digital and my uncle David Morgan, because that was rough on my family. That's the first one of my uncles from my father's side that okay. has passed away. Yeah. So it's a really heavy time for me and my family, um, just energy-wise, you know, because yeah. we know that one day we're all going to go, but it's what we leave behind. You understand, that was the perfect way to end this conversation. 
any leave your contacts where they could check out anything else you have coming up where they could actually pre-order the song and all of that good stuff so they could keep up with you and yeah, man, go on my page the link is in my bio on my instagram page just follow me at grips morgan it's very simple on all platforms twitter instagram and on facebook it's gramps morgan music and just uh, the links are there go to itunes um, and set up at Apple Music and, and pre-order the, the, the song right now because I do believe it's going to... My father sent me a voice note and said, this song is going to live forever. Like, happy birthday to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah happy it's that birthday. type of song. It's that kind of song that will be there long after I'm here in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was time and place. It was just the world needed a song like that coming from somebody like you right now today. It just connected. Thank you, man. You understand. Gramps, it's been an amazing conversation. I can't wait till you guys start flying and everything and come back to Canada so we can actually sit down with you and the group in the studio. I have so many things in my mind. <laughs> but you see, this snippet here, I want to give everybody because this was a, an amazing conversation. Your vibe, your energy, on yes. point. Thank you so much for having me, brother. Big up yourself. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.